So, you want to make your own DIY solar power system? Well, here's what you should know. I've just built my own off-grid system, and yes, I'll have a full video on how I did it very soon, so I think I'm in a good position to run down the main things you should know, starting with the biggest one. Grid tie or off-grid? Grid tie means the, the power generated by your solar panels connects to your standard house wiring and more importantly gives you the ability to sell any excess energy you make back to the grid. By comparison off-grid well rather obviously means you're off-grid you won't be using your standard house wiring but that works well for renters like me and is a fair bit cheaper. Grid tie is what you'll find professional solar installers will use. It's the most sort of long-term cost effective, as not only can you offset your entire electricity bill, but you can even sell the excess energy you make back to the grid to help recoup your costs. Sadly, this is well, a much more costly option in general. I mean, generally, you would only do that if you owned the house. I mean, why spend money improving someone else's property or asset, right? Uh, the biggest reason for that cost is that you need a considerably more expensive inverter, battery system, and generally more solar panels too. Plus, a certified electrician to not only at very least do the grid hookup or the grid side hookup for your inverter, but also to give you an MCS installation certificate, help you apply to your local DNO or district network operator for approval, and to help apply to your electricity provider for an SEG or smart electricity guarantee so that you can actually sell that electricity back to the grid. By comparison, an off-grid solution can be as big or as small as you'd like. It's also much easier to make it a semi-temporary setup, like mine, so it's a lot better for people who are renting. That does mean that you aren't likely to offset your entire energy bill with your solar power, but you also don't need to drop 10 grand on a full system, inverters and batteries, just, you know, to make a, a little bit of extra power to take up your base load. Things like your fridge running constantly, or in my case, PCs that run pretty much 24-7, and so it's a good way to help offset those costs. It's also not too big a deal if you undersize your system for what you end up needing, as you can both expand it later and just use an automatic transfer switch to switch back to mains power should your battery run out. Okay. Let me run you through the main components that you'll need and a bit about what to look for on each. The most obvious one to start with is the solar panels themselves. I generally put these into sort of two categories, hobbyist and professional. Hobbyist panels are generally uh, something in the order of about 100 watts of power, give or take, they can be slightly higher, slightly lower, uh, and they also tend to be considerably smaller than the more professional panels and are great for a, a very small or basic setup where you just want to stick a, a couple of panels on your shed or garage roof so that you can maybe have a bit of power in there for you know charging motorbike batteries or e-bike batteries or even just having a bit of power for lighting and maybe tools or something like that. Nice and simple, relatively contained, but also not that much power. On the flip side, there are the professional panels. These are massive, like 1.8 meters by 1 meters each, and are generally only available from wholesalers. Most places I've found here in the UK won't actually sell you them directly. They only want to sell them to businesses, although I'll leave a link to the one place that I did manage to find who are willing to sell you know, to me directly. Leave that in the description below. Plus, they actually have a pretty massive, if almost fully sold out, inventory of options, so go take a look. These panels tend to output anywhere from like 200 to 450 watts of power. Mine are 400 watt panels, and surprisingly, they weren't that much more expensive than the hobbyist options. The size might make this difficult for a DIY installation, as you generally find these mounted to your roof, 
but I've managed to make it work for three panels, so it's kind of up to you there. For a professional installer installation, these are the panels that you will be getting. Next up is the inverter. Long story short, your solar panels will produce DC or direct current power. Simple plus and minus, nice straight line. But your devices almost always need AC or alternating current, the wavy one from your wall. Uh, and so what you need to do is convert the DC from the solar panels, and generally the battery, into AC for your devices, which funnily enough is the job of an inverter. For a grid tie system, you will need a relatively high-end grid tie inverter. This can be in the thousands of pounds range just for the inverter. That's one of the higher costs of that sort of solution in general. You'll likely need one that can handle all of the power that your entire house will need. Something between three and six kilowatts is probably about right. Although if you have things like power showers or immersion heaters, you might need to either leave those things connected to the grid or you'll need to splash out for a much higher output inverter. If you want your battery hooked up directly to the inverter for, in theory, the best efficiency, what you're looking for there is a hybrid inverter. Most of the people that sell hybrid inverters also sell you the battery packs that you would need to use with it. Some, like uh, Huawei's hybrid inverters, are designed to work with crazy high voltage batteries, like 450 volts DC kind of hot. Some are much more reasonable and would rather you have more like 48 volts instead though. If you are buying a bundle like these Give Energy ones, you don't really need to worry about compatibility, they should work together just fine. If you're running an off-grid system, that's generally a little easier. While you can get a hybrid inverter to run off-grids, well, they tend to be more expensive, or actually considerably more expensive than you really need, especially for a relatively simple system. And you can just buy a standalone, relatively cheap inverter uh, for a small system. That's what I did myself, and that's what I would generally recommend. The one thing you should triple check before buying, especially a standalone inverter, is if it is a pure sine wave or a modified sine wave inverter. You want the former. Modified sine wave inverters will be cheaper, but they can also damage or brick your devices, especially with anything with a motor or sensitive electronics. So trust me when I say spend the extra and get a proper pure sine wave inverter instead. Moving on to battery storage, this is also a bit complicated, so bear with me. First things first, AC or DC? If you're going with a, a more minimal route, you want DC. If you're buying a hybrid inverter and battery kits, well, you get what they're selling, so no need to worry there. AC batteries, like Tesla's Powerwall 2, for example, have inverters built into them and are connected to a sort of controller that will manage where your energy goes and if it should be output to the grid or if you need to use any grid power to top up. These are considerably more expensive thanks to having a full inverter system built in, but they're designed to work with a, a full system anyway, so, well, especially for a professional installation, it might be a better route. DC batteries, especially for smaller systems, can technically be anything including deep cycle lead acid batteries, or anything like AGM, or absorbed glass mat, and the various other styles like that, but trust me when I say you don't want that. Lithium, especially LifePo4 or lithium iron phosphate batteries, are generally what I would recommend there. You can buy pre-made battery packs, including from places like AliExpress, if you're willing to wait for the cost saving, actually a pretty significant cost saving, or if you're experienced enough, you can build your own pack, like I did, but if you're watching this video and this is your first, you know, kind of ent entree into, uh, you know, batteries and solar, I would definitely recommend against that. In fact, I would generally recommend against it unless you are very sure of what you're doing. Electricity can be literally deadly if you aren't careful. So if you aren't confident, just don't think about it. Buy a pre-built pack. It's not that much more expensive. 
You can even buy them in server rack battery or server rack mounting solutions, which makes mounting them super easy. If you do go with a small off-grid system and want to use a separate inverter, you'll need a way to get the power from your solar panels into your batteries. That's where a solar charge controller comes in. There are kind of two categories for this, PWM and MPPT. You want the latter. MPPT or maximum power point tracking is the more advanced way for the solar power to be DC to DC converted from, in my case, 120 volts at 10 amps from the solar panels down to more like 28 volts and 43 amps for the battery. It is generally, it sort of generally has the best efficiency compared to PWM, and so it's definitely worth spending the extra over a more uh, basic PWM option. You will need to pay attention to a few of the specs though, like the maximum current voltage and what battery voltages it can support. The Renogy model that I have supports anything from 12 to 48 volt batteries and will charge up to 60 amps, meaning a maximum of 1600 watts with my 24 volt battery. That works well for me since I'm using three 400 watt solar panels, but if I needed a 12 volt battery for whatever reason, I would either need to only use two solar panels or bump up to their higher end 100 amp unit instead. A few notes on some of the other parts you'll need, like connectors, isolators, and cabling. It is best practice to include a DC isolator switch for at very least your solar panels. I currently don't have one, although it is uh, one that I, something I'm planning on installing very soon. Bit of a do as I say, not as I do in this case. Uh, and if you are building your own, that is something I would definitely recommend. The panels will almost always use MC4 connectors. You might need to pick up a, a pack uh, or a spare pack, although they're actually happily very inexpensive for the sort of cabling and connectors that you're getting, so that's always good. You can even buy them on Amazon. If you are willing to buy a crimping tool, you can even make the cables yourself if you'd rather, although make sure that you're using the appropriate wire gauge. The thinner the wire and the higher the current, the more heat it will output. The more losses you'll have and the higher risk that you'll have, you know, a fire, a short or other sort of rather serious issues. For AC cabling, if you are running it outside, I would highly recommend getting armored cabling. It isn't all that much more expensive than standard twin and earth. I got a 10 meter reel for 19 pounds and that's plenty to get the power from my shed into my house. You'll also want to make sure that you're using cable entry glands for any cables coming into or out of enclosed or dry spaces like your house. They aren't expensive and it's well worth it. Oh, and make sure that you put them on before you actually, you know, run the cables and put all the connectors on just make sure. I also want to talk a little about mounting the panels themselves. If you're having a professional install them, odds are they're going to be on your roof. A south facing roof, at least here in the northern hemisphere anyway, is ideal, but your installer will work all of that out. If you're planning on DIYing it, you have plenty of options. You can build a frame to stick them up as a, a carport or a garden shade like I have. You can mount them to a, a garage or shed roof, preferably your own, or mount them to you know your roof if you're able to, if you're you know that's a safe thing for you to do. As for mounting the inverter charger or charge controller and batteries, the first and most obvious thing is a dry indoor space. That can be in the garage or shed, an exterior storage space, whatever, but it should be protected. The second point is that they should be reasonably close to your solar panels where possible. The lower the voltage and the higher the currents and the longer uh, the wire, well, the less efficient it's going to be, the more energy you're going to lose to heat in the wires themselves. So it's better to have long 240 volt AC mains wiring than with short DC lines than the other way around. Okay, I appreciate that's a whole load of information, so I'm going to leave it here. The next video in the series will be all about my setup. Actually, you know, what the parts I've used, 
the actually getting it you know, built and up and running and powering all of my stuff. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Also, I, I want to make it abundantly clear, I'm not a you know qualified electrician, I'm an idiot who happens to have enough knowledge to be dangerous, and I guess I want to share at least some of that with uh, the rest of you, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, if you are unsure about any of this, just get a qualified electrician to, to do it for you. It will be worth the money instead. Uh, you know, your life is kind of priceless, so it's better to spend a little bit of money on a qualified person than to, you know, well, anyway. Uh, if you have any questions, like I said, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. If I've missed anything, if anything is incorrect, please do leave that in the comments down below. I would love to learn from any actually qualified people. And uh, yeah. Uh, that's kind of it. Uh, if you want to check out some more videos, I'll leave some on the end cards for you. If you want to support my idiocy, then you can check out the links in the description down below. Uh, you can become a YouTube member if you fancy, patron, uh, pick up a rear t-shirt like this one. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.